Welcome to our haunted studio, where we will be investigating a mysterious power, one that is invisible to the naked eye, can control robots, as well as giant, scary spiders. <laughs> it's infrared. <laughs> Welcome to Toy Teardown Halloween Special. All right, let's have a look at the box. So we've got, it says it's infrared control, uh, battery operated with light and sound effects. Cool, wow. All right, let's open her up. Let's free her. Ooh. Cool. I'm really unsure what this is supposed to be uh, in terms of the shape of it. Uh, who knows, but uh, this is the remote control um, and our spidey. Let's have a look at our spidey. So it looks, seems like a plastic shell. Seems to be covered in this sort of like uh, felty material. Makes it feel a little bit floofy. Um, we've got a couple of wheels on the bottom here. A couple of wheels sort of in its head region. Um, and they swivel. And I can see a little gear in there too. So, But what's kind of cool is our our legs move up and down. So I'm really excited to see how this thing moves. Looks like we need some batteries in here. All right. Let's see how she works. Ah! <laughs> uh, this is the remote control. It's got these two buttons here. I've got no idea. Whoa! Got no idea what it's supposed to be. It kind of looks like a poo, if I'm honest. Um, but look, that's cool. It's supposed to be creepy. Um, if I press, <laughs> really jumpy now. If I press one button like this, it goes forward. Um, it's got some wheels on the bottom. I can see like a motor uh, or like a cog here, which is probably gonna have a motor inside, I guess. Um, what I find quite interesting is how the legs, the leg mechanism works. So they kind of flap about a little bit and then pressing the button, well, it looks like they're moving. So I'm interested to see what that looks like. Ah! Okay, so it seems to not be working when it doesn't have line of sight to the spider. So I'm guessing that has to have something to do with the technology inside. Maybe there's like some kind of transmitter and receiver. I'm assuming this is transmitting something and somewhere on the robot it's receiving it. Could be here maybe. Oh, okay. It kind of looks like there's a little thing, there's a little hole in its butt. So, so maybe it receives the signal through its bottom. Who knows? Let's open her up and find out. I'm gonna start with this, which is the battery compartment. All right, the batteries. Six screws. I've lost track of which ones I've pulled out. Sticky little screw. Oh no! <laughs> oh, its legs fell out. Oh dear. Oh. Hey, all right. So, you can see our cords here, which go to the eyes. So, those will be LEDs. Yep, you can see there's an LED light inside there. And then in here, we have got a whole bunch of different tech. So, there's our motor. Our little processor there, and some more screws here, which I'm going to pull off. Keep this one separate. Okay, cool. All right, so we have a motor. Uh, I've got this little spiral connection here, which turns all of these different gears. As you can see, they're all connected like this. 
as this turns, it changes the direction. And I guess we also have one to make it go forward, which might be what this gear is for here. Pretty cool. Okay. The motor is attached to our little control processor, which I can kind of pull out as well. So we can have a quick look at that. So this is what I'm guessing is the infrared receiver. So that's how it's receiving the information from our remote control. Awesome. Cool. All right. So now that we've had a look at the spider, let's have a look at the remote control. One, two, three, four. Hey, hey. So we've got the front part, which is just these kind of two little plastic bits which push down on the buttons here which each have a different function okay so we can take this off this is our control processor here that just comes out like that and here we go we've got our infrared transmitters I guess this here this LED light is just going to be telling you that you're pressing a button but how does the signal even travel? We're gonna have to learn a bit about infrared to find that out. Now, when I press this button, I actually can't see these two LEDs flashing, but they actually are flashing. They're flashing in infrared, which our eyes can't see, but you can actually see infrared in some technologies, like this phone. Now, the flashing you can see in the phone really fast, but you can actually see that it is in fact sending a code. So most infrared transmitters that you can find around your home, like your TV remote, have two types of flashes, a short flash and a long flash, a zero or a one. That's just binary code, which is pretty much how all computers communicate. The receiver like in a TV or on this spider, is programmed to recognize different strings of that code. And it uses those to tell the spider what to do. Make the motors move, to turn, to move right, to move backwards, whatever it does. <laughs> but previously I was trying to make it work and I was around the corner or there was something in the way and it actually wouldn't work. And it's actually because the receiver here needs line of sight. It needs to be able to see the flashing coming from the remote control. Kind of like when my cat sits in front of the TV at home and I can't change the channel. But why can't humans see this light? And why use infrared? Well, to answer that, we're gonna have to understand electromagnetic radiation. Now humans think we can see all of the light around us, but that's really not the full picture. There's a lot more going on. Now we can actually only see a tiny amount of electromagnetic radiation. It sounds kind of scary, but electromagnetic radiation is just energy that travels and it spreads as it moves along. It can be measured based on the size of the wavelength it moves along. There are loads of different types of electromagnetic radiation, ranging from AM radio waves at about 100 metres, all the way down to gamma rays, which are at about 0.001 nanometres. Now these occur in the hottest, most energetic parts of the universe, like in supernovas. Now, if you line up all the different types of EM radiation, that's what's called the electromagnetic spectrum. Somewhere in the middle is the visible light spectrum, which is basically the EM radiation that we can see. That's because the wavelengths are the perfect size for our eyes to capture, any bigger or smaller, and we just wouldn't be able to biologically see them. Gonna need some snacks. Now we understand visible light, let's talk about infrared. Now just outside of the visible light spectrum is infrared. Now these wavelengths are far too large for the human eyes to see, but it kind of makes it perfect to send signals through electronics like in your remote control. Fun fact, some animals can see in infrared, 
like mosquitoes, vampire bats, bed bugs, as well as some species of snake and beetle. This helps them to catch their prey. Now, as for why we use infrared, simply put, it's cheap. Now, there are amazing uses for infrared, and we're gonna get into those later, but for small electronics like this toy spider or your remote control at home, the parts are easy to find and you don't have to worry about lasers flying around your living room when you wanna use the TV. As I mentioned before, there are actually some really amazing ways you can see infrared. Just like at SciTech here at this infrared exhibit, we've got a thermal camera here which actually shows infrared as heat. So the hotter parts of my body, like my face are showing up white and the colder parts like this bowl are blue. And as you can see inside, I've heated up some delicious popcorn from the microwave. <laughs> now where infrared really becomes useful is looking at space. Telescopes and satellites that use infrared are able to ignore things like dust clouds and see further and further objects like those big high energy stars that are really, really far away. This is our Milky Way using the visible light spectrum. Let's take a look in infrared. Whoa, pretty cool. I don't know about you, but I absolutely find it amazing and mind-boggling that this really simple, cheap technology is being used in telescopes to allow us to see further into the universe than we ever have before. It's pretty cool science. So now we've pulled apart this terrifying tarantula and learnt a little bit about how infrared works. Now I'm thinking if this is actually scary enough for a Halloween special. And seeing as though spiders don't actually use infrared, I wonder if we can make this a little bit more scientifically accurate. Hmm, I wonder if we can make this creepier. I think it's just gonna need a little makeover first. What do you reckon? Yes! Let's do this. Let me introduce you to, this is a rodent with skin wings that feasts on its prey, on the blood of livestock. It's pretty creepy and it uses infrared to see. It is the vampire bat. <laughs> so what I've basically done here is I've just taken some string and wound it around one of the uh, gears inside so that when I set it off, it starts to wind up or down the gears and has the illusion of flying up and down, <laughs> which I find pretty fun. This thing actually uses infrared to find its uh, prey. Uh, so I thought, yeah, a bit more scientifically accurate as well. I hope you enjoyed this Halloween special of Toy Teardown. And if you've got any spooky science questions or any toys you want us to pull apart, let us know in the comments. Make sure you like, and subscribe and uh, let us know if you like the show. Right now I'm about to go and do one of my favorite things at this time of year and chuck on a scary movie. Ah!